everybody and welcome to let's look at sniper elite nazi zombie army we kind of need to explain what the distribution is for this game because it might seem a little weird this is basically an expansion to sniper elite v2 which i played last year and uh, did a let's look at of on the channel which was a world war ii themed third person shooter that was kind of a little stealth based a little it was like a sniper game it wasn't just like a call of duty where you're mowing people down not that i have anything against that necessarily uh, in any case this is a standalone expansion to it so you don't don't actually need to own the uh, initial game but it's based very much on that game's framework uh, and this is actually only 15 bucks whereas the original sniper elite v2 i believe cost 50 and i've been playing about uh, an hour and a half of this game so far and I'm actually despite the title despite the fact that in some ways it's kind of blatantly you know air quotes inspired by the Left 4 Dead series uh, I'm having a surprisingly good time with this so far I think I'm feel comfortable giving this game at least a mild recommendation but anyway the main focus of this game is on four player cooperative so you can play with your friends but sadly since I have no friends we're gonna be playing single player here so I'm going to do mission select and I'm gonna do village of the dead which is the first mission here and I'm gonna play on the marksman difficulty and you're very quickly going to get a feel for what's up with this game. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk over the narrator, but basically what's happened is that, you know, it's 1945 and the Russian armies are advancing from the east and the allied armies are advancing from the west. And basically Berlin is surrounded and Hitler unleashes zombies that he has been doing, I guess, kind of supernatural experiments on. Anyway, we can change our loadout if we so choose. Uh, I kind of like taking the Garand. Yeah, we have one there. Uh, for the pistol, I like the... Well, actually, we don't have access to it yet. Maybe we'll find one. Why, why don't we take the Luger and um, secondary weapon? Uh, do we have the option to take a shotgun? I don't think so. In which case, I will go with the Thompson, which is A-OK. -okay. Can I crank up my grenades? Oh, you have a certain number of grenades. I see how it works. Anyway, this is fine. I'm going to take dynamite and trip mines down and land mines down for now and crank out my grenades a little bit. Uh, and I guess we'll get one more land mine. In any case, uh, let's go back here and start the game. And the main premise of this game is kind of like a survival game in the same vein as Left 4 Dead. Uh, there's no way of getting around it, you know, we're going to find things like safe rooms which contain a whole bunch of ammo. Uh, we don't die in a single hit from a zombie, uh, so they're not super, super dangerous, although they do kill you fairly quickly. But it's got its own kind of unique bend to it as well, because it is the Sniper Elite V2 uh, framework. And the main uh, thing about Sniper Elite V2 that was uh, so exciting for a lot of people was uh, the ability. Let's just try to do it here. We can slow down time uh, by breathing out basically, but is this uh, X-ray cam, which is what made the game stand out for a lot of people around its initial release. So basically what this means is that we're going to get this brutal X-ray cam occasionally when we deal a, a kill shot to an enemy. It doesn't have to be in those situations uh, where we manage to uh, get a headshot. Sometimes it'll shoot them in the heart or something and that'll work. We can also search bodies for uh, ammo and other supplies, but um, mostly we're just going to be moving around, killing zombies and trying to survive. And I gotta say, I really dig the soundtrack of this game, and I think the music is very well done as well. And uh, the sound design, in a way, it's a little cheap, like, the way that they get the scares is basically just by constantly surrounding you with this uh, kind of zombie groaning in an unfamiliar language. As you can see, I am a terrible shot. Uh, but like zombie groaning in an unfamiliar language because I don't speak German we'll just search these corpses um, But it, it's effective it works you know there are times the the enemy locations I believe are scripted so it's one of those things where once you play it through the second time There's not gonna be as much suspense I think but you know I guess we'll put that to the test here because on this mission This is my second time oh didn't mean to do that This is my second time uh, doing this mission so we'll see in any case the other thing I wanted to point out is that the uh, heart rate monitor on the left side of the screen second actually is super important uh, because as your heart rate gets faster and faster you have less uh, time there we go to actually um, did this hit this guy or hit the guy behind him oh it hit him right in the shoulder that's gonna be good enough um, gives you less time to actually slow things down now the x-ray cam is one of those things that's divisive uh, I think a lot of people are gonna feel like it's it's a little bit too prevalent it does show up very very frequently depending on you know how good your shot is uh, my shot's not great, but it still so it shows up pretty frequently. You can turn this frequency down in the options menu. Uh, but, you know, if I'm playing a game called Nazi Zombie Army, I'm not going to be too uh, perturbed, I think, by the prevalence of a, uh, a, a slow motion camera. Now, we are primarily going to focus on using our sniper rifle, which usually works pretty well, as you can see. 
Uh, but as enemies get closer, I might want to use my submachine gun, or I might want to actually switch to my pistol. Uh, generally speaking, in contrast to most games, your sniper rifle actually has usually the most ammo uh, out of all of your guns. So it's not a situation where you want to save rifle ammo. Usually you kind of want to save, uh, in particular, machine gun ammo, because when a lot of enemies get close to you, that's going to be an effective way to take care of them. I'll admit, sometimes it can feel like it's a little bit laborious when you get a ton of x-ray cams like this, but if you're the kind of person who... Uh, it really enjoys these x-ray cameras. I don't know what other games they've appeared in. Stuff like like Mortal Kombat or Blitz the League. Something like that. Um, then, then you'll be right in your element here, I feel. So far the game hasn't been substantially difficult, but I've run into the occasional problem. Uh, sometimes enemies can be resurrected, by the way. My uh, scoped shot accuracy is going to be horrible. By the way, this is a game based on points as well. Uh, depending on the difficulty and distance of your shots uh, and where you hit the enemy, you can get extra points, and it's it's kind of like, a, there's a dual focus, one of the focuses is on, um, you know, just completing the game, and completing the missions, and the other focus is on score attacking to a certain extent, and I, I'm basically verifying right now that indeed enemy placements, uh, and ammo placements are the same everywhere, at least from what I can remember. So there will be, uh, non-random enemy waves, basically, that are going to appear, and the game, one of the major complaints I can levy against it, keep in mind this is a $15 game, uh, and it looks much better than a $15 game because it's based on that, you know, Sniper Elite V2 framework. Uh, but one of the complaints I would levy is that it is pretty repetitive, but you know, single player Left 4 Dead is repetitive as well. I like Left 4 Dead as much as the next guy, uh, but it's definitely multiplayer focused. And I haven't actually spent any time with the multiplayer in this game. It's something that I might be uh, interested in doing in the future because I'm enjoying this game a lot more than I thought I would. It's not going to change the, the world. It's pretty derivative. Let's switch to a, another gun to take out this guy. Uh, it, it's pretty derivative, uh, and if you already own Left 4 Dead, this might be the kind of thing where you're like, okay, why would I, you know, play this game again? Just wanted to make sure he was dead there, because sometimes they can come back to life. Um, but, you know, it, it's way better than I thought it would be, given the title and the premise, which obviously seems super, super derivative. Uh, this guy's going to come back to life as well. So I'm, I'm running a lot, but I'm ugh, trying not to run that much. Because when you run... Uh, you actually, uh, your, uh, heart rate goes up and it takes longer to enter that state where you can actually use slow motion. And it's important to use slow motion because these damn zombies shamble in such a way that their heads don't react. Uh, there we go, he punctured his lung there. So it's not just headshots where you get that x-ray cam, as you can see. Uh, but their damn heads don't move in the same way that normal walking humans do, so it can be sort of difficult for the brain to parse what's going on. I do like, I, I think it's stylish, um, the, uh, the x-ray cam. It's a little bit overdone sometimes, but it's cool enough in its own right as well. Okay, he's getting too close. Enemies do do a decent amount of damage to you, so it's, it's fairly important to keep them at a distance. Uh, you can probably die, you know, three to four zombie hits, I would say, so if they come up on you, uh, it's not uncommon to, like, be at basically full health. This game does use regenerating health, like Call of Duty. Uh, but it's not uncommon to be at full health and then totally... Uh, be down to zero as soon as they come after you. So, basically, in the, in the time that I've played with the game so far, there's only been really, like, two different kinds of objectives. There's been, like, objective go here, and objective survive. So, um, the thing about the original Sniper Elite V2 that, that kind of was weird for me is it had this mechanic where basically there were, like, traps that you could place down, but I never really, I mean, I only played about two or three hours of that game, uh, but I never really used those trap mechanics. Because I always seem to find myself in a position where you're, like, moving from place to place. And when you're doing that, um, what's the point in throwing down, like, a landmine or a trip mine or something, right? It actually works, in my opinion, a lot better in Nazi Zombie Army. Uh, because you are... Sometimes you'll be in, like, a location that's being sieged by zombies. And then it makes a lot of sense to kind of, like, almost in a tower defense style. I didn't realize he was so close. Uh, in a tower defense style, like, throw down uh, traps for where you think enemies are going to come. And then, uh, you know, shoot the ones you can and let the traps t take care of the other ones. I think it works much better in this game than it did in the original game. And in fact, I would almost, even though it's super, super kind of played out by now, this Nazi zombies thing. Um, even, yeah, even though it's super played out, I would almost say that this is, in some respects, a more enjoyable game uh, than the original Sniper Elite V2, despite being uh, like one-third of the price, at least at release. I'm not sure how much Sniper Elite V2 goes for now. I mean, that was, it reminded me a lot of like Medal of Honor games, basically, uh, Sniper Elite V2, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. This part is where I died a lot, like my first time through the game. Um, zombies are gonna come through there. 
I'm gonna save my submachine gun ammo and try to use my pistol instead. Uh, cause that's very important. Just kill these guys like so. And I thought there was one that like spawns behind me or something. In the meantime, let's just reload our Luger here. And wait, cause I believe there are more zombies and I don't want to be next to them. Eventually we will come across... Oh god! Where'd you come from? Resisting temptation to do Cotton Eye Joe reference. Um, eventually we'll get access to a shotgun and that's gonna make things a lot easier for us. In the meantime though, these- oh god! I forgot that there was one up here as well. So yes, uh, same enemy spawn locations every time. But apparently, that doesn't stop me from being surprised and freaked out. Uh, so basically, they're all gonna come up through this choke point. I could set grenades if I wanted to, maybe we should do that. Choose Zed. And let's just set a landmine down here. So I'll put one right on the stairs, and then I'll back up just so you can see what goes on here. I don't want to get hit by it, but we'll see the explosion, I think. So we got a two-for-one landmine kill, which is not that great. Um, there's only one way for these guys to get up here, so I can basically just camp out here. I could throw grenades if I wanted to. Uh, we have other stuff available. Yeah, there's some hand grenades there. I don't know if the zombie weapons factor too much into their damage ability, but there are going to be, like, boss zombies we will come across. Uh, which might have a gun, for example, or might have, like, TNT strapped to them, which makes them a pain in the ass to deal with. Luger's actually a pretty good pistol because it uh, reloads really quickly as opposed to some of the other revolvers we can get. But those revolvers usually have higher damage. So I'm basically just waiting until all of the uh, zombies have come up through here. There's probably some that just sprouted out of the ground. I thought I heard some. Yeah. So I can try to take them out like this. It's probably easier. If you don't get a headshot, they can sometimes come back to life. Uh, but it's probably easier to take out some of them this way and then just kind of hang out and make sure... You know, none of them are coming up as I'm trying to kill the ones like this. Um, we're almost out of ammo on our Luger. Maybe we want to go back to our rifle right now. Uh, I do have a pretty solid heart rate right now, so I should be able to take these guys out as they come up. If they are indeed coming up. Our next objective lies down here, so I kind of just want them to rush me. In which case, I will, there we go. In which case, I will kill them like so, and uh, then we'll move on. I gotta say, there's times in this game... When this dude's heart rate is actually lower than my resting heart rate. Which probably says something both about my physical fitness and this dude's tenacity in the face of, like, sheer horror. I think we're coming up to our first, um, safe room, though. I hope, anyway, because I could really use some ammo, especially for my pistol. Yes! So, we do come across these safe rooms. Um, they work in typical, you know, Left 4 Dead fashion. They serve as an objective complete, a checkpoint, uh, as well as uh, a place for us to restock on our ammo. And we can change weapons if we want to, so let's see what we've got here. Uh, we can switch our uh, Thompson for a Blizzkowika. Again, I'm not much of a World War II buff, so I can't necessarily say with authority what any of these are. This is a cover-based shooter if you choose to play it like that, but I, I beat the entire first mission basically never using cover at all. And you're, you're going to start to get a feel for the kind of rep repetitive nature of the game here. There's pretty much there's sections where lots of enemies come at you quickly, and you'll probably need to use other weapons. Um... Other than your rifle, I, I'm uh, intending to mean there. Uh, and then there's going to be sections where, you know, enemies come at you fairly slowly and from a distance where you have an opportunity to use your rifle, you know, as it was meant to be used. There's a certain element of, um, you know, this being kind of doing the same thing over and over and over, but I, I don't mind it. I, the, the gunplay is reasonably satisfying and it's varied enough compared to other first-person shooters. And, and, you know, the X-ray cam adds a certain novelty that I don't dislike either. And you can get sweet double kills like that, which are also cool as hell. Um, so, as, as much as I'm ashamed to admit it, uh, this is a game where perhaps the content is not 100% fantastic. Although I find it reasonably enjoyable, but it, it, in a way it's almost won me over by its cool factor. And that's something that very, very rarely happens. Uh, and again, that's why it's a little bit shameful for me. But, you know, uh, it's a very style, stylish uh, package and it's put together in a technically competent way. There was a resurrection there, by the way. Um, and that's that's more that can be said for most games. I find it reasonably enjoyable and I'm, you know, kind of hoping that I'll get a chance to check out the multiplayer soon. Although I'm not really interested in playing with, um, with random people. I would much rather play with friends. Anyway, uh, these guys are getting a little close and my aim is garbage. So fairly soon might want to actually, that's probably a resurrection waiting to happen there. Um, might want to switch to another weapon. I love getting these long kills though, there's something satisfying about that as well, even without the slow-mo. In fact, sometimes especially without the slow-mo, and there's times when, uh, occasionally, you'll get an awesome, uh, kill that is not actually... 
uh, from hitting someone in the head, like maybe you'll hit someone in the kidney, or you'll hit him in the liver or something, or the lung, or the heart. And, and that's satisfying as well. By the way, this might be a fairly long let's look at. The first mission took me about 52 minutes to beat it for the first time. Uh, and something, I, I was tweeting about this game yesterday, and a lot of people were saying uh, that, you know, Sniper Elite V2, when they beat it, it only took them three to five hours. And for there to be like six to eight missions in this game, which are presumably about an hour long each, actually makes for a much more attractive value proposition than the original game. So, you know, it's very weird to be saying this, but this standalone expansion may well be a, be a much better pickup than the original game, as fun as the original game could be, uh, for some people at least. I think I, I, if I remember correctly, I gave um, the game something of a mixed... Not really review, because that's not what Let's Look at are, but something of a mixed... Im oh, God! Uh, impression on my initial... Uh, look at and, and my opinions on the game have not changed since then but this game you know there, it feels like it's a fairly loving a homage to like uh, 80s action movies like or 80s horror movies and zombie movies in general I mean like the the uh, soundtrack sounds like it was basically ripped out of like a John Carpenter movie from the 80s and I am a-okay with that that is like really cool in my books how that is well done um, do we have more jump scares here okay this is a an element that I really wanted to show off there are times uh, and this is the most fun in the game, I think. Uh, there's times when you have to survive pretty scary sieges. So we'll have, like, you know, hundreds of zombies come for us here. And we'll have to fight them off uh, without getting killed ourselves, which might not be the easiest thing in the world. I very... N oh, God! Forgot about those guys. I very nearly failed this section uh, a couple of times. And I did fail this mission a couple of times, uh over the course of my first playthrough as well. Okay, so now we have to survive the siege. So what we might want to do here is maybe let's throw down, do I have trip mines? I do have one trip mine. So let's throw down a trip mine like right here. So we can put that down like this and then uh, spread out this big wire here. And if, does that, did that work? It didn't work? What happened? Maybe I, I went too long. Okay, let's try it again. So we'll put out a trip wire like this set it down like that and then if someone trips over that that'll trigger that it'll hit this explosive barrel and hopefully we'll have a chance to fight these dudes off so now we're probably gonna just have to survive the siege uh, I have to watch out for enemies coming from all sides oh here we go alright so I should wait my heart rates pretty good we're gonna start trying to pick these guys off one by one uh, you know an arm hit it's something but it's not gonna be good enough and there's gonna be many waves here again this is nothing we haven't seen before uh, in, in other video games but that doesn't stop it from being fun, basically. I don't think there's anything necessarily to be ashamed of in liking this game. And it, it, it's unfair for me to say that I'm uh, ashamed to be liking this game. Or a little bit embarrassed or surprised. Because it's a technically well done game. I, it, like, I feel like much of this video... Oh, don't trip the tripwire yet. I want there to be a lot of enemies there when it happens. Um, yeah, you know, it's not fair for me to say... You know, oh, I'm surprised to be liking this game. What, did I shoot that guy through his testicles after he was already dead? That hardly seems that noteworthy to me. Okay, really? We're gonna do this then, are we? So we're getting a little bit close quarters here. I should probably, uh, you know, think about A, throwing a grenade in here. Like so, that tripwire actually did really well. Uh, that other grenade, I'm not sure, actually did anything. Shoot him in the head, make sure he's dead. Uh, and now we might be ready to run to another location. Or we might be smart to get ready to run to another location. Eventually, we will get, like, suicide. Yes, this guy right here who might... Yep, he killed us. <laughs> I was kind of expecting that. Those guys do, like, 99% of your damage. Or 99% of your health in a single attack. This game is not easy, at least in single-player form. Uh, it's not easy at all. Do I, have, I do have a trip mine left. So I, I think the trip mine worked really well there. Let's set that up again, and I'll just try to be a better shot this time. In fact, what I might want to do is actually start by being out here so I can get some easier shots uh, as they first start coming. Sexually. Uh, are they? Yes, I think they're going to start coming now. Usually it's preceded by that, like, scream. So I'm just going to get my heart rate low, as it is right now, uh, and then start taking some shots here. And, you know, the more enemies I can pick off before they get too close to me, the easier it is going to be to survive the siege in general. That should be a decent shot. Might take his ear off. Good enough for me. I don't think he's going to survive that. There's another one. So when you empty your lung, which is the E button, I guess it's like hold your breath, but hold your breath without any air in your lung. Uh, you do go through this period 
where you basically have, um, you know, if it's full, you might have 10 to 20 seconds of uh, slow motion. That was a sweet double kill there, too. See, there's nothing to be ashamed of in liking that. That's cool. In my opinion, at least. I, I am shooting my gun through the rock, apparently. That might not be so cool. This could be a double kill as well. Nah, I guess not. Damn spine of that dude stopped me from getting an easy kill there. That will be a kill as well. It's going to puncture the zombie's lung. Apparently, you don't just have to destroy the brain. Heart rate is a little higher now, which is to be expected considering we just killed eight zombies. Did I just get... Oh, I'm getting punched. I should run. All right, that was a situation where things could have gone better for sure. So I'm just going to use our submachine gun a little bit here. Obviously, this has a lower aim, uh, which is going to cause some problems for us. Might be best for us to use our pistol. Worst case scenario, I can fall back a little bit oh, and catch them at a choke point back here like this. Uh, and maybe might be a good opportunity to toss a grenade in here. We'll see, though. We'll slow him down a little bit. I don't think I killed anybody with that grenade, unfortunately. Hopefully that trip wire goes off soon, because these guys are coming fast and furious now. And they might be able to come from the side of the house, too, which would obviously be bad for me. But anyway, we'll, we'll start trying to headshot these guys as they come in. It's not easy. That's a cool shot, though. That'll probably pierce his lung or something. We'll see. Oh, well, no, we won't. Oh, we actually... I think we managed to at least hit the guy behind him. That's pretty cool. I, I don't really know how the transparent, or sorry, not the transparency, the, the point system works all the time. Uh, but, you know, longer shots and shots where you kill multiple enemies definitely seem to be worth more, as you might expect. So we've got to reload here. That guy got resurrected, like, right in front of me, which is not good, as you can probably guess. But a few very clutch shots there. Oh! God damn! Suicide bombers, man! The propane tank killed me again! Well, maybe I won't do the whole uh, mission on this episode, but I will restart this checkpoint. We'll try it one more time. I mean, there are other mines that I can set up, so it might be in our best interest. Okay, let's um, go to our trip mines here. And we'll just stretch these out like so. All right, so that's an easy one. Uh, and maybe I should run forward and just put some uh, landmines down here as well. I didn't really use traps my first time through. Which I think was a, a kind of spot where I was sorely lacking. There's a part later in this mission where we'll do like a, a siege. And in doing that siege, um, you definitely want to set traps. Because it, it is almost like it's set up like an Orcs Must Die level or something. There we go. Finally got a good hit. I, I ran around so my, um, my breath is not being held right now. Which is bad for business. And I should probably start a little further back. Because enemies uh, have a tendency, I guess, to spawn behind me. Which is my own fault for taking a more... Advanced position, I suppose. Again, is that a three for one? No, I thought maybe. That would have been pretty cool. We got a resurrection, unfortunately. I do have a chance to use a little slow mo here. Oh, but then I had to reload. Have they spawned behind me yet? Was that just a dude's legs? Re oh, don't do it. I should run. Yes, that's why I should run. Um, three for one landmine kill is good. Sometimes the aiming f with the, th um, like the, the non-sniping weapons when you're in third-person mode, sometimes it feels a little wonky, like sometimes I feel like I'm missing shots where the crosshair is like right over their face. Uh, but that might just be me. Okay, this guy is the most annoying piece of crap. There we go. With him actually being dead, that makes things way easier on us. Those suicide bombers are a big problem. Anyway, let oh! How did you get here? And you as well, um, that's our cue to leave, I suppose. That one dude got resurrected as well. I really just wanted to throw a grenade. Oh, shit. That's gonna be the end of us again. Just run! The zombies shamble! Why didn't you run effectively? Not good. This is not good for us. Um, this is not how I beat the mission my first time through. Seems like a good opportunity to do a little of this. And then throw a grenade and not get killed by that suicide bomber, hopefully. I can't vault over this cover for some reason, so we're just gonna die here. Alright, <laughs> I think that's effectively all I need to show off of um, Nazi Zombie Army. I, I imagine the game shines a little bit more in co-op, but I like it enough single player to recommend it. And that might seem silly, 
But, you know, don't knock it till you try it. This is actually a surprisingly fun game. You know, it's been nearly four years since Left 4 Dead 2 came out, so I think we can stop knocking games for kind of ripping off that formula, as this game does to a certain extent. I think, you know, this game's totally fine. 15 bucks seems like a very good value for a game that you and your friends could play. There is a four-pack available on Steam. It's not going to change the world. It's not introducing any super innovative ideas. I just think of it as almost like a World War II-themed and kind of more polished, good-looking uh, version of Left 4 Dead 2, basically. Plus, it also has uh, a bitchin' soundtrack. And for what it's worth, I, I, I know it's cheesy, but I still like the sniping mechanic when it's in games. And the X-ray cam occasionally produces some really cool stuff. So that's my balanced approach uh, to my thoughts on Nazi Zombie Army. If you're expecting something artistic, you might want to look the other way, but if you're expecting something that is cool, mostly as a result of its style and its concept, uh, then $15 is not a heavy price to pay for a game that is definitely enjoyable, and to be honest with you, seems like kind of the definitive Sniper Elite V2 experience, if I may say so. But in any case, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.